Hello, and welcome back to A Swift Look. I'm Zoe Jewell, and today we are going to be breaking down Taylor Swift's Apple Music playlists that are supposed to uh, reflect the various stages of heartbreak. Let's just get into it. So if you missed the news on Friday, Taylor Swift dropped five new Apple Music playlists that each showcase her current songs, discography, all that stuff. Just that alone, you'd be like, that's not shocking at all. Here's why it's shocking. These five playlists have been broken up into Taylor, what Taylor believes are the five stages of heartbreak. So denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. And this is all in anticipation, obviously, of her new album, The Torture Poets Department, coming out in less than two weeks, which is so exciting. Um, And so she's created these different playlists, and she's put the song that she already has out into these different playlists, depending on their theme. So if a song maybe is when, you know, a, a song's theme is anger, she put it in the anger playlist. The crazy thing is that there are certain songs in certain playlists that one would think shouldn't be in those playlists. We'll get into the specifics, don't you worry, because some of them are actually, it's making me question everything. What's also interesting is with each of these playlists, Taylor put an, or included a voice memo of her explaining um, why the playlist is what it is and why it's named what it's named and also why there are certain songs in the playlist. If you're confused right now or you're not exactly sure what's going on, don't worry. We'll go through each one. We'll explain it. We'll get into it. Okay, let's start with the first, the first one, the first playlist, the first stage of heartbreak, which is denial. Okay. And this playlist is named I Love You, It's Ruining My Life. Now, I'm pretty sure that this is a lyric from one of the songs on the Torture Poets Department. Taylor released. I think when she released one of the track, it could have been the track list, or maybe it was when she announced one of the extra bonus songs. This line was on the um, like vi- visual sort of album art artwork type of thing. So I think I love you. It's ruining my life is a lyric from some song that we're going to be getting very very soon. This is what Taylor said though about this specific playlist. Quote. This is a list of songs about getting so caught up in the idea of something that you have a hard time seeing red flags, possibly resulting in moments of denial and maybe a little bit of delusion. Results may vary. Okay, let me just go through some of the songs that Taylor Swift has included in this denial playlist. Number one, Lavender Haze. Lavender Haze. Now, if you guys remember when Taylor released Midnights, which is the album that has Lavender Haze, Taylor herself was on camera explaining the meaning of Lavender Haze, which is a term that she first heard from the show Mad Men, basically about when you're so in love with somebody that you're in this lavender haze and nothing can penetrate it, nothing can disrupt you. You're just like so in love and you're in your own world, you're in your own bubble. Very clearly at the time, talking about her relationship with Joe Alwyn and how you just don't let the outside noise get to you. The fact that she included it in the denial playlist makes me think that upon reflection, she's realizing, oh, I was trying to tell myself, I was trying to tell myself what I wanted to hear about my relationship rather than what it actually was, which is crazy. Sweet Nothing is in this playlist. Again, sweet, sweet. I mean, that's a, that's a love song. Inherently sweet. Nothing is a love song, but she put it in the denial playlist. The worst one of all though, or the most crazy one of all, is that she put Lover, Lover in the Denial playlist. Lover is like the most romantic song she's ever written or one of the most romantic songs. It's a song that she herself said she wanted people to dance to at their wedding. And here she is putting it in the Denial playlist. I mean, wow. And again, this is all crazy because we we know as fans that Lover, Folklore, Evermore, Midnights, while she wrote about lots of different topics, subject matter, she didn't always write from her own experience, a lot of those songs were from her experience being in a relationship with Joe Allen. And so the fact that now she's basically letting us know, hey, by the way, those songs you thought were love songs were actually me being delusional. 
crazy. Some other songs that are on here, um, Wildest Dreams, that's not too, super shocking, Style, Betty, but Lover and Lavender Haze are two that I'm like, oh wow, that's kind of crazy. Um, okay, moving on to the next stage of Heartbreak, which is Anger. And she called this playlist, You Don't Get to Tell Me About Sad Songs. This is what she said about the playlist. Quote, these songs all have one thing in common. I wrote them while feeling anger. Over the years, I've learned that anger can manifest itself in a lot of different ways. But the healthiest way that it it manifests itself in my life is when I can write a song about it. And then oftentimes that helps me get past it. Makes sense. Here are some of the songs that she put in that album. Not as, or not in, in that playlist. Bad Blood, Mad Woman, I Knew You Were Trouble, Dear John, Forever and Always. There's nothing super shocking in this playlist right now. Now, what I am most curious about is I'm assuming once the new album comes out, she's then going to put the, she's going to then separate the new album into the various playlists. And so I'll be very curious to see what from the new album ends up in the anger playlist. But oh, all of this, for the most part, makes sense. This is th- These are definitely times when Taylor was upset, mad, but there's nothing, which is kind of interesting, nothing from reputation, nothing from, um, nothing from lover um, on this album, which is curious, or on this playlist. I keep saying album, but I mean playlist. Okay, moving on to the next stage, which is bargaining. And she has called this one, Am I Allowed to Cry? Um, she said, this playlist is about trying to make deals with yourself or someone that you care about. You're trying to make things better. You're oftentimes feeling really desperate because oftentimes we have a gut intuition that tells us things are not going the way we are not going to go the way that we hope, which makes us more desperate, which makes us bargain more. Okay. Here are some of those songs on this album. Bargaining guys, Cornelia Street, which is another song that's very pointed about Joe. Peace. I would say those are the two biggest ones for sure. I mean, Peace is a song clearly about her. I think deep down, she she wrote Peace as a love song. I love you so much. I see your family as my family. I want to give you everything in the world, but I can't give you peace. I can't give you the calmness that you're looking for because my life is crazy. I'm super famous. And so is that going to be enough? Is Is what I can give you enough for you? And Again, at the time, we're like, wow, this is a beautiful love song. Upon reflection, we're realizing Taylor recognizes that it's probably not going to be enough for him, but I'm hoping that it will be. So that one is curious, to say the least. Okay, we have two more left. The second or the second to last stage is depression which she has called old habits die screaming. She said, quote, I often feel like when I'm either listening to songs or writing songs that deal with this intensity of loss and hopelessness, usually that's in the phase where I'm close to getting past that feeling. Here are some of the songs that she has on that playlist. Maroon, My Tears Ricochet, All Too Well, Last Kiss, White Horse. I'm now realizing though, as we're going through all this, she doesn't have any songs from Reputation on this album or debut. And I'm thinking it's because those are the two albums that she doesn't own yet, that she hasn't claimed for herself. I'm just I'm just now realizing that. So that's interesting. So those are your depression playlists. And then the final stage of Heartbreak is Acceptance which she has called, I Can Do It With A Broken Heart. And she said that these songs represent making room for more good in your life, making that choice, because a lot of time when we lose things, we gain things too. And here are some of those songs on that playlist. You're On Your Own Kid, The One, Invisible String, which is very interesting. Very interesting because I think what she... My read on that of of her including Invisible String in this playlist is that at the time when she wrote it, she thought the Invisible String was getting her to Joe Alwyn. But I think now what she's realizing is he was just a part of the string, which is now leading her to somebody else. Interesting. Um, Other songs, Daylight, Clean begin again. So a lot of songs that are about about like moving forward, moving on, um, and like being okay with where your life is 
right now, which is interesting. I found these playlists to be so fascinating. Her decision to put certain songs in certain, certain playlists, like I think had the whole Swifty community up in arms and freaking out. And it made me freak out too. Like Lover in Denial is just crazy. Like she had to know when she put that song in the playlist, she was like, this is going to turn everybody upside. This is going to turn our entire world upside down because I will never be able to see or hear that song the same way ever again. I feel like I won't be able to hear a lot of the Joe Alwyn songs the same way again, knowing kind of what we know now, which I find to be very interesting. But I would love to know in the comments section what you guys thought of the album's um, being in these various playlists, songs you were surprised to see in these playlists, songs that you're questioning why they're there, um, all that kind of stuff. I honestly, again, I mean, of course I'm excited for the new album to come out, but I'm really curious to see where these songs end up and where she places them. Um, and this is going to be a, a good one, guys. Very, very, very good. Please make sure to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. We, as I said, less than two weeks away from the new album. So lots of content, lots of things to go over. You don't want to miss any of it. So make sure to be subscribed to our channel, follow us on social media, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.